there is nothing wrong with your internet, do not attempt to adjust your settings. We are controlling the podcast. We control the squealing and the screams. We can make your heart flutter, your eyes blur from tears, or sharpen your mind to crystal clarity. For the next hour, sit back. We are in control of what you hear. We repeat, there is nothing wrong with your setting. You are about to experience the awe and mystery known as the female mind. You are now entering the Fangirl Zone. Welcome to 47 Survivors on the Fangirl Zone, a podcast on the ABC TV series The Crossing. I'm Terry. I'm Sean Fangirl S. And I'm Steve, and we'll be discussing Episode 8 of The Crossing. All right, guys. So, we only got one episode left? No. (laughs) Okay, that's what it said, though. I know that's what it said, and I thought for sure there was more than that, so I went and did some digging and uh, checked, and sure enough, there was originally 11 episodes, so I went over to Spoiler TV and checked, and sure enough, as of... The 23rd of May, episode 9, is going to air next Monday night at the regular time. Okay. And then on June the 9th, which is a Saturday, beginning at 8 p.m. Eastern, we're going to get episodes 10 and 11. That makes no sense. No. <laughs> it really well, makes ABCs. zero sense. It's ABC. They do things that just don't make any sense sometimes. Well, I mean, I guess we should be happy we're getting the 11 episodes they actually filmed. Right, but the That's preview bizarre. sure made it sound like next week was it, and I was going, are you skipping two episodes and going straight to episode 11 or what? And, you know, unless they've changed their mind since the 23rd, which is when Spoiler TV no. did the uh, ABC press releases for those episodes. So uh, I haven't seen that thing, so. I don't know. That's 11 so weird. Episodes. Eleven yeah. episodes. That's bizarre. And then, <laughs> and then the other. Well, you know why they're doing it? So they get they get the airtime, and they're just throwing it in wherever because the show got canceled. Right. Uh, we don't have to put uh, the other ones on on Monday again. Uh, we got a Saturday. We got a couple hours free. Yeah, throw them in there. Right. I'm so and, confused. Uh, <laughs> yeah, wow. That's that happens quite often on network TV and yeah. even on cable because yeah. what they move. Oh, what was it, Sean? The um, like which of our shows? Yeah, and the uh, the one come. that was really bad. Oh, yeah, we won't talk about that one. <laughs> yeah, but they moved it to like midnight on Saturday or something. That's right. <laughs> oh, I kind of forgot about it. Yeah, it was like midway through. Was it Hunter? The season. Yeah, Hunters. And it's like, oh, we're just gonna move this because Steve and I thought it got canceled. Right. And it's like, oh. No, it's still popping up on demand. What is happening? Yeah, it's like weird, <laughs> random. Like after the cheesy movie is how they put it. And that's right. why I'm like, and you're going to put this on a Saturday? You're really at this point like, oh, I don't even care if we get ratings. That's what it seems like. Right. Wow. Yeah. That Something, I don't know what it is that caused them just to completely give up on this show, but they sure did real quick. Ah, damn, because this episode was like, wow. <laughs> yes, it really was. Maybe Steve Zahn called like an ABC executive a jerk or something. Yeah. I, I'm we don't know that, about. Or somebody offended somebody or something. It's just like, what the hell? <laughs> well, you know, every every so many years, on and in cable channels too, but on the networks, every so many years, they get programming executives, even if they're the same ones, who are like, when it comes time for the chopping block, they like wield the axe really fast. Right. And then other seasons with shows that are doing eh, so-so with ratings and they're kind of hanging on, they might wait till later or they might let it finish the season and say, well, we're not going to bring it back in the fall. Something like that. But apparently this is, because there were a few shows that when they announced this got the axe also got it. Right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. it was like yeah. massive clean house day. So. Yeah, it was a bloody uh, oh. Friday when ABC announced what they were getting rid of. I yeah. guess we should be happy when we do get shows that actually are able to complete the storyline or at least give us enough to make us satisfied with 
with it and not feel like this sucks. It's a huge cliffhanger. Right. But you know, which I kind of expect this. I one think to be. we're gonna. Yeah, I'm sure they had filmed episode eleven as or right before they got the news. Right. Oh, absolutely, they did. So if it w- if if they had the usual number back in the day. It used to be that your standard number of episodes for a show that got picked up on regular networks was 13 episodes. And then if the show didn't do that well, they would stop it before that. But that was usual. The run was 13 episodes. And then if it was doing really well, it would come out in the news that the network picked it up for X number of more episodes. Right. Because it used to be the standard number number of episodes in the season was like 20-some. I think way back in the day, even before our time, Steve, I think it used to be like in the high 20s, low 30s. For a number of episodes, I yeah. I thought, like, just looking back at some old shows, that it was, like, 26 was a normal season. So 13 would be, like, the half. 20. I always thought right. it was 22. 22 or 3. It might be 26, yeah. But, I mean, it used to be just, it used to be the bare minimum that a, a network would order if they felt good enough about a show was 13 episodes. So this is kind of odd that maybe they ordered 13, and then they gave them the axe, and they probably gave it, like I said, as or after they filmed 11. So I kind of think 11, like you said, Steve, is not going to be a satisfying conclusion. But yeah. it sucks because the ratings, and Steve has the ratings used, and I feel like it's pretty good. I don't know if it's because normally what we talk about is, like, cable stuff. 500,000, <laughs> yeah. Like, these are good numbers. Like, so let's talk about the numbers then. All right. Yeah, Episode 8 brought in a 0.5 and a 2 share in adults 18 to 49, which has been their number all season long. Very much, yeah. Unfortunately, the viewers dropped to 2.73 million, oh! which was a big drop Crap. from the previous week, mm-hmm. yes. But, of course, announcing that they were canceled probably said got a good... I think a lot of people were ticked with it. Three quarters of a million yeah. viewers said, screw it, I'm not watching the rest of it. Actually, Double I crap. did see a lot of that. A lot of people yes. were like, oh, yeah. I forgot this started. And, oh, this is really good. And it's like, wait a minute. They're announcing it, that they're canceling. Why am I even going to get into it then? Right. Don't want to, yeah, we, we don't want everybody's heart broken, but we're staying with this. Right. Uh, we we did true. get some live plus seven days for episode six. It tied for 18th in adults 18 to 49 percentage gain. Going from a 0.5 to a 0.9 for an increase of 80%. Jesus. Why can't yeah. we get these numbers over on our other shows then? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so it's not like they aren't getting yeah. viewers. They may not be watching it live on the day it airs, but they're watching it within the week. It took them long enough to start acknowledging and counting the live plus sevens. Right. Right. I know when we were doing another podcast for the old show Fringe, the co-host and I used to complain constantly about why don't they count live plus sevens? Yep. You know, and uh, even and, these, even this is outdated. Yeah. You've got so many other options to watch it online, streaming. Yeah. That's not getting counted in these. So, you know, Nielsen just needs to hang it up and quit reporting numbers that aren't really don't really mean anything anymore. Well, yeah, that's true. And then I found out, and I'm not sure how true it is, because it it was actually revolving on one of our other shows, that some of these stations for the these shows only have first run, like first run rights. And so if you're watching it on your DVR, on demand, streaming later, that it's not counting. And so they're just thinking, oh, it's not worth it. And they need to update that. They need to count that. Yes. I mean, they can report like you did on what the numbers they have are, but they need to count stuff like that. And I understand you want to get the viewers watching live. I prefer to watch live, you know, as it's being broadcast. I because do you too, want, but... Because you want the revenue. Your advertisers want to get seen. God knows they get seen, even if you stream it on TV anyway. So right. Yeah, <laughs> but then stuff like me, I got knocked out with a migraine. I wasn't going to be able to watch it as much as I wanted right. to. People have to work. Because you were because you were partying for your birthday, happy belated. Yeah, thank, you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I knew I was going to work it in somehow. <laughs> yeah, that picture of sangria was really the the migraine <laughs> causer, but you know, <laughs> it was worth it. But yeah, they don't <laughs> count they don't count the live plus sangria numbers. Yeah, no. yeah, yeah I, I don't know why. They'd be a lot cooler if they did. All right, anyway. No. 
All right, let's get in. (laughs) Yeah, let's get into episode eight. The Long Morrow. A grisly discovery in camp leads to the arrest of an unlikely suspect, and a risky move by Jude may be the only way to expose the truth. Meanwhile, Reese finds herself captive, and Rebecca falls under the sway of Naomi in a way that could change everything. Yikes. Yeah. 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 (laughs) That's creepy. That was just vague enough to be like, yep, yep, that happened. Yeah, (laughs) exactly. Yeah, that last scene we're going to get to was like, whoa! Oh, my gosh. (laughs) It was kind of the equivalent of the the scene, the final scene in the Blair Witch Project. (laughs) Just more people. (laughs) <laughs> that's all it was that one well that got kind of a moment better lighting oh by far <laughs> yeah by far all right good god let's, and the camera stayed up right that's true <laughs> <laughs> all right let, let's do the locals shall we if they're agreeing to sure you want me to jump on that okay jump, jump uh on. so we had a town meeting everybody's getting upset here they're trying to confront the mayor jude's kind of pitching in a little bit Nestor's kind of just standing there like, I don't like this. And they're trying to calm the people's concerns. And the people are like, you know, what are, what's the, what are with these people that are around here? And apparently the mayor's, uh, and, and Jude's words are not exactly comforting. Uh, <laughs> just, a little. just a little. And the mayor tries to tell them that she just found out about it. And then Gabe decides to jump in here and stir the pot. And uh, he said, there's people up there. They're being held against their will. I've got proof. Yeah. And flashes his pictures. Yeah, that Holy was great. Guacamole. Yeah. <laughs> and Jude's like looking at Nestor going, well, I wonder where he got that from. <laughs> <laughs> How'd he get that? So he he gets the crowd really stirred up. And he's like, you know, we ought to find out what's going on. These are Americans. Jude's trying to say we don't know where they're from. Gabe is really pressing the point that they are Americans. And they are being held against their will, and the crowd is just feeding right into it, which I can kind of understand because, you know, they got all this stuff going on that they're only hearing peripheral stuff to very little. And they're like, we want to know what's going on. Right. So so I I get that the crowd was fired up and Gabe just kind of fans the flames. So they decide to go up to where the camp is on Moss. Let's go up there and find out what's going on for ourselves because we're not getting told anything. And so uh I thought it was interesting because we suddenly have the actress name is Brooke Smith. I know her from Grey's Anatomy. She's in tons of, tons of stuff. But she's kind of like on the side like watching all this. Yeah. And suddenly like we see her later like trying to get into the like, camp somehow. I'm like, "Okay, she is obviously not a townie." Clearly. So right. who is she supposed to be? And I don't remember seeing her at any of, like, the meetings of the ones that came before. Nope. I think she's a new character. Okay. Like, We're being introduced. Completely. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. I was like, who is this woman? So um, Jude tells Nestor, get everyone from the department to keep the crowd at the bottom of the mountain, which doesn't, well, well kind of sort of works. <laughs> 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 and then Jude goes to the camp first. He hops in the car, and he wants to inform Bryce about the situation. So uh, he gets up there ahead of everybody else, meet, uh, goes to the roadblock where they have that gate, tells them that there's a crowd, they're coming up the mountain, and uh, they're pretty PO'd. <laughs> he doesn't say that, but, you know, they're clearly PO'd. So I need to talk to Bryce. But this time, at least the guard at the gate had the sense to be like, oh, crap, okay, hold on. Yeah. Not going to sit there and be like, ha ha, we told him. Yeah. Right. Uh, we saw we saw that particular guard later, but it wasn't that one guard who's got like almost jet black hair and he's like a real jerk more than most of them. Right. Yeah. I don't know if he actually has. I guess he has a name in the credits, but he wasn't there at the gate. This other guard Jude talks to, and like you said, he had the sense to like, okay, hold on. So um, Nestor and the company try to keep the peace, and they have to arrest a man and a woman. And one of the ones they arrested is that woman you were mentioning, Sean. Yeah. Because she's like, what are you doing? Uh, I'm arresting you. What's it look like? We're not getting ready to play part cheesy. <laughs> no. I forgot to bring the board. I Game forgot of to Twister. Bring the board. Yeah, Twister. Yeah, there you go. Actually, I would like to have seen that, but I'm just a weird guy. <laughs> so Nestor gets a call from Jude and tells the crowd to disperse or else more will go to jail. Uh, he does tell them that 
something's I forget what it was. Something's going on in the camp, and they were going to have vehicles going up and down the road. Right. Yeah. So they needed to clear the area, which is true. <laughs> you know, I was surprised that the crowd didn't like scream right back at him when he said that. They were kind of like still irritated, but they were kind of listening. And I would have kind of figured the crowd would have been like, shut up, we want to go through. Well, when uh, he said the reason, which we'll get right. to, but I, I think all of a sudden they're like, whoa, there's some stuff happening. Like, You're right. serious yeah, I don't stuff. want to okay. know that bad. Right? <laughs> exactly. So uh, Gabe calls Marshall. Of course, they were the cohorts that did the um, the uh, the drone with the, the camera and all that stuff. And Gabe has kind of run with this. And Marshall is kind of like, eh, she's a weirdo. I don't think I want to be bothered. And uh, he's like, well, come on, man. This is a revolution. You got to be here. You know, and Marshall's like, "Uh, I don't think so. (laughs) So if you change your mind, Gabe says, you know, get up here. I am so ticked with Marshall right now. I'm like, you're all gung ho. But then she tells you really what's happening. You're like, okay, this is a lot of shit. Never mind. Yeah, I'm checking out. Yeah. (laughs) Well, I guess, you know, maybe uh, once bitten, twice shy. Maybe Marshall uh, doesn't make him, like we were talking last week, doesn't make it a non-jerk move, but Marshall's probably uh, gun-shy when it comes to that kind of stuff. Anyway, so the woman that got arrested, we found out later, because everybody got let go except this woman, uh, that she has no ID or any kind of contact information, making her even more spooky. And she doesn't have a name listed other than her actual name. In IMDb. <laughs> of course not. She's the nameless woman. You heard of the headless horseman? She's the nameless, nameless woman. <laughs> okay, so, so who do you think? Do you think she's Apex or another survivor that ended up, like, coming out of the water? Any thoughts? Actually, I think she's a Domino's delivery driver. <laughs> but damn it, I had my, a pizza for them. It would be my first guess. Uh, and she left her ID in the car. With the the goofy domino sign magnetic attached to the roof. No, I, I don't know. I think I'm she's, thinking she's one of the first arrivals. That's that what I'm thinking. Is that they weren't able to uh, get there for the meeting, and I think she's probably actually changed her position on this, and maybe the one that can fill in some of the blanks for uh, Jude. Ah, yeah. Okay. I, I think she came with the first, and she's had some kind of a falling out with either Lindauer or um, Eve. Eve. I think not everybody's both. gonna have a falling out with Eve. Oh yeah, she's a jerk. Yeah, we saw a little. Especially the, her husband. We, we we saw a little kink in the armor uh, between uh, herself and Lindauer <clears throat> with some of the things she was describing, and he kind of had this look in his face like, "Oh, mom, did we really gotta?" Yeah. <laughs> uh, so there might be a little crack in the dam, I think. So anyway, uh, inside the camp, past the gate, Jude is taken to where they found the body. this body, not a very deep grave, and they pull this blanket back, and lo and behold, <laughs> as Jude has been looking for her, what do they find but Emma? Yeah, they find Emma's body there. And bef- while a couple of the... Uh, Homeland Security guys are yapping away. Jude kind of very craftily crouches down next to the body and goes into the pocket and pulls out something. Didn't see what, but later he hands it to Nestor. They check it out. It turns out it's a key fob, which he says, which he said, and I didn't know if this is actual true or made up stuff. Uh, he said the newer ones, uh, give you information about where you've driven. Yeah, yeah, I wonder. Now I'm looking at my keys like, really? I know, me too. I'm like, yo, man. Does it? <laughs> oh, hell yes. There it is. It's got a GPS tracker in it. You damn straight it does. I figured my phone does. Every time I drive past, <laughs> every time I drive past the tower, it gives the ping mm-hmm. that, you, that you can't hear. Apparently, I guess dogs in the neighborhood can. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's interesting to find what's he going to suddenly find then from... So yeah, being Steve idea. confirmed it, he's with the first group, and he's uh, he's an apex. So we gotta get rid of Steve. <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs> so uh, Jude calls Martin uh, for help with the fob to find out what's on there, and Martin does come through, turns it around pretty quick, like uh, Jude requested, and uh, he clicks on this file in an email, and it shows a map with lines drawn of where the car had been. Was yeah. anybody else a little distraught though that? 
Martin asks, oh, is this about that missing agent? And all of a sudden, Jude's just like, yeah, she's not missing anymore. And just like, dead yeah. panned it, and, and Martin's just yeah. like, nothing. Yeah. yeah. It's like, oh. Well, I think, I think Martin knows what he means. That sucks. <laughs> Yeah, she's she's uh, rotting and stiff. I think he knows what that means. Yeah, and I think that's probably why he turned it around so quickly. Sure, uh, and I'm sure that I'm sure that Martin, I'm sure Jude has told Martin. We we've seen other things where you know there's some weird crap going on. So like if Jude's going to request something, you know Martin, if he's able to do it, he's going to do it for him. Yeah. Yep. So hopefully he's not part of or doesn't become uh, beholden to uh, the first group, Eve's crew. That's kind of like, you know, he's like the techie guy for Jude and Nestor, so I don't want him to get like overtaken, so. Well, <sighs> let's go to camp, shall we? Yeah! So, Rebecca is still pretty upset about Leia. And Caleb does now. not seem upset about Leia. <laughs> yeah. Which, of course, not the right thing to say. No. And I think we're all in agreement. Whether you you have kids or not, you don't go to a distraught woman and be like, "Yeah, but you know, she's not ours." Yeah. Ooh, that just I was watching it going, "Oh, Caleb, no, no, honey, that's yeah. not what you do." No, because Leah was basically a substitute for their own for their own child to oh, Rebecca. Oh, yes. Whoa. So Caleb should know that. He should know better. Come on, dude. It's like, other than in the pilot, when he was super happy about finding Rebecca, like, he has shown almost no emotion. Yeah. Right. So, I don't know. He just has to shut down, I guess. But he's trying to help her, and I get that. And he's trying to be like, but you got to understand, this wasn't our kid, and it wasn't but the way they, to do it. But if they have a kid of their own, and they left that child behind when they crossed over, I mean, come on. Even if Caleb is trying to keep a brave face because they're in this unfamiliar surrounding, or if he's just normally, like, not a person who has, like, a a wide-ranging up and down of emotions, some people are like that, still, you're going to sit back and go, we really didn't want to leave this kid behind, but we did. Right, and then we find out that they didn't just leave their kid behind, their kid was taken by the Apex. Yeah. And so the only person... Which I'm kind of surprised Caleb shared the information with Rebecca that the new girl Naomi who woke up was one of those kids. So yeah, that was oh, odd. Yeah, it's the only person that she knows. So yeah. it's like, okay, I will go ask her. Maybe she knows my daughter. Which yeah. I mean, I get that, and at the same time, I'm like, you could be completely heartbroken in about five seconds. Hell yeah! Right? Yes, <laughs> it could be yeah. a whole lot worse. I did not exactly. know what to expect. Right. Oh. No. But it was weird because the way Naomi's explaining it is basically these kids. And, and it's funny because she says in ter- in terms of where we are now, it's these kids all had like autism. Mm-hmm. And they were used for specific tasks because of how their brain worked. And I'm like, OK, well, we know there's, you know, a lot of different aspects of autism. So I'm like, all right, I can see this. You know, you have really high functioning people some of them are like mm-hmm. non-verbal but super awesome with math you know okay mm-hmm. but they're exploiting it i'm like oh that's kind of shitty <laughs> what a- well they're a they're apex yeah. they're jerk what do you expect? right yeah <clears throat> they have already eliminated eight. all of those bad genes from their genome yeah. but at Edge. the same time they found that yes some of these kids were savants and Yep. could do things that they couldn't do. Mm-hmm. Which I I like the fact that we find this out, you know, that and that they keep the kids together, that they're never alone because they found that they've worked better. But I'm thinking, oh, man, how long did it take you to find that out? That's like, right. Oh, that could be painful for some of them kids. It's already bad enough. Exactly. Sure, sure. And Naomi is just like, oh, but I did history, so here I'm a prophet. They let me know everything. And Rachel is kind of looking at her almost like, I don't know, like she was heaven sent. Like, right. Oh, I mean, that was weird know look. Yeah. Stuff. It was just, she was in awe of her. But I felt like she wanted to grab her and just hug her. Yeah. Like, it, she had that weird look on her face. Yeah. And then Naomi's like, we have to get out of here. And people like you can help me. And I'm like, uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> the, way it was, right. the way it was said. 
I don't know about you guys, but the way it was said, I was just like, oh, this sounds like, yes, I need to get out. You can help me. I don't care if you make it, is how I kind of check it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It was one of those, I think I tweeted out, June Jones much? Yeah. Because <laughs> I definitely got that feeling from Naomi was, yeah, she thinks she's a prophet. And, and in a sense, she probably will be a prophet. But you don't go into it with that attitude, I don't think. And and I think that's where it kind of got Rebecca a little off her game was to hear it come across that way. Mm-hmm. And, well, Naomi's- of course, Caleb should have warned her about that to begin with, and he yeah, didn't. He didn't, yeah. I think I he should have told I, everybody. You know, you know, I like Caleb. I, it's not that I find him suspicious, but it's just... I, this episode kind of made me sit back and go, what is his deal? You know, I mean, is he really just simply trying to keep a straight face because of the situation, or is he just someone who doesn't have wild swings of emotions or something else? Because he didn't tell her about that. Like you were saying, and I'm like, well, why wouldn't he? And if they had a kid of their own that was taken by Apex, and they ha- they know about Hannah uh, working with them, and now they've got this Naomi in camp, why don't you, like, drop the bomb on her and let her know? And, and she goes off to see Naomi on her own. And I'm like, dude, I mean, give her, like, a briefing, something. Right, because... <laughs> What's up with that? Because she knew Caleb wouldn't, un- not necessarily understand, but wouldn't approve, so she sneaks out when well, he's true. asleep. True, very true, that's true. And I gotta say, for from a, just as a sidebar, from an aesthetic point of view, because I've noticed this kind of goofy crap, that writing on those walls in this episode seemed awfully freaking neat for wide-tipped marker. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Looked to me like she had, like, engineering drafting tools, and she <laughs> drew all, all, all those characters. I was like, this is not the markings of somebody even taking their time using a marker. Right. Yeah, that's that was pretty impressive. I'm like, are you sure yeah. you're not an artist? Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, we, totally. we get some Hannah and Roy, too. Oh, I love Lauren Roy. Uh, but, uh, you know what? He's got a better attitude right now than Marshall, so. Yeah, totally. Uh, we have Paul stopping to talk to Roy for a second, asking if he's heard from Emma. And mm. Roy's just like, no, she's out sick, and... Roy's like, oh, well, that sucks. And somehow, all of a sudden, Paul's like, hey, are you married? Special guy, gal. And I'm like, wow, okay. Like, <laughs> that's not normally how you open a, hey, how you doing, guy? What's up? Yeah. Are you married? It's like, are you in a bar picking him up? What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> like, it was just weird. And I love it because Roy just kind of looks at him like, what? No, no, I'm not. And he's just like, oh, if you find somebody special, hold on. Don't let go and jump in. I'm like, what? What is this? Yeah. It felt so out of place. Yeah, it did. And I I don't. I I can see trying to make conversation, and I can see that conversation with Department of Homeland Security guy, even if you are on some sort of speaking terms with him, being an awkward conversation. But it was like that's a weird thing to say. Right. Like maybe. Oh, are you married? No. Anybody special? You know, kind of like that. But going from Hey, is Emma around to Are You Married? It's like, huh? Well, what? you got to remember, Paul drew the picture of Eve and right. gave it to Emma. Right. So, yeah, he's wanting to know what Emma found out if she located. Oh, that's true. His wife. True. That's true. And it's by you know saying how special, once you find somebody, you hold on to them, that's kind of what he's doing. So, yeah, he's kind of giving the youngsters some advice. It it just really seemed out of place, though. (laughs) At first it it did. Yeah. (laughs) Well, it seemed like maybe a second half to that wasn't there. Like, you know, do you have somebody where Paul would say, I do. Right. 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 Like, that would at least make sense. Yeah, but he didn't say that. Yeah. Yeah. So he's, like, looking out into the distance longingly. Was that what was? A boyfriend, a girlfriend. It's like, what? Okay, I'm done with this. Yeah, dude. Anyway. But it does key Roy to go talk to Hannah. Yeah. Yeah. And he gives her the locket. And she was, well, first of all, where did he pull that extra piece of pie out from? Because I swear he was sitting on it. But. (laughs) From his crotch. It was like, 
oh, I did this and this, and then I made pie. And then here's a piece. It's like, where where the hell did that just come from? Were you <laughs> and how, on it? And how far back did your mom make that pie? Is that, <laughs> is that stale now or whatever? Is it good for, like, a doorstop now? Frisbees, yeah. <laughs> Frisbee, yeah, there you go. But I like because Hannah looks at him all crazy and then tries to take a bite of it. But he's like, here, I have this locket. I went back for it. And I looked inside. And I know, yeah. I was surprised, and he, though. And he left the picture in. Yeah. Mm. And then she actually explains to him that, yeah, we're. what do you know about us? And then actually says, yeah, we're from the future. I don't know who he is. I was told he's somebody important. Yeah, that he would protect us. Protect us, yeah. And I don't know. Do you think Roy was, like, believing her? Since, I mean, he looked a lot no. more on board than Marshall was, I'll tell you that. Yeah, oh, yeah, think... his reaction wasn't near as rejectful as uh, Marshall's was, that's for sure. Yeah, but he wasn't sitting there nodding his head going, okay. Right, yeah, he, he yeah. wasn't buying it. But, of course, he, he tells her that, yeah, he had heard rumors of that. so. At least yeah, he's had true. some time to Process. think about it and digest it a little bit, so it's not such a shock to his system as it was in Marshall's case. Okay, that makes sense. And I'm thinking, it all right, they're going to have hiccups. <laughs> he was going to have more of a <laughs> conversation, and then this little kid comes up like, I found something. I'm like, oh. Uh, but I uh, was honestly thinking this was going to go bad for Roy. Right. Yeah. Thankfully, it wasn't that because I was worried of what was going to happen in this moment. And it's bad enough that, yeah, we find Emma, which, by the way, I mean, how long has she been gone at this point? And you're. 10 days. 10 days. Yeah. Interesting because, uh, how, how did that body look so good 10 days out? Well, yeah. that's the thing. Even, uh, Jude, Jude, Jude even mentioned that. that. Yeah. yeah. Says, no, that, that body hasn't been buried for 10 days. No. And it wasn't exactly. And of course, buried, yeah. what was so good about it was they get right up to the point where they're about to reveal what he finds, and they go to commercial. Right. I know. So, <laughs> That's why I thought it was bad news for him. Yeah. yeah. It's like, uh oh, this is something that you know, like they're going to shoot him, or they're going to take him off the campsite, or something or other. And, I they yeah, were and we send don't him actually off. find out that it is Emma until Bryce shows Jude that it's Emma. Yeah. And you go, oh. Man, totally weird. Yeah, weird that Bryce is like, oh, yeah, Jude, I was looking for you. So come on, come on in. I have something to show you. And, of course, Jude's like, all right, something's hinky here. What's going on? He even says, you're going to let me come in? You know, and he's like, like, yeah, "Yeah, per Lindauer's order. Yeah, of course it's Lindauer's orders. And, like, we'd already talked about the body, the key fob. And and that part confused me. Why would Lindauer... He already knows who she is. Eve knows who she is when she killed her. Why? And it, so it wouldn't be to identify the body. Why would Lindauer give the thumbs up for Jude to come on board and then Bryce takes him to show the body? I think because he had set up Paul to yeah. take the fall for it. Yeah, that's exactly and he what would say. get Jude off his back. He says, "Oh, yeah, Emma's dead. Here's the guy who killed her. Get off. Case closed. Yeah, get out. Bye." Yeah, and that's exactly what he did. <laughs> of course, it was Lindauer had to have this plan because Eve screwed the whole thing up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she totally did. Well, I don't know if she did or not. We don't yeah, know. She, she did. <laughs> I don't know. I, I Every evil genius has one screw up. <laughs> Come on, yeah. man. <laughs> well, it's going to depend on whether or not she lets Paul stay with her or if he goes back to the camp and they have their ritual suicide. Yeah, that was some messed up shit right there. Jonestown! Yeah. Well, yeah, you'll get to that soon enough. Yeah. Jonestown, baby! Who's got the Kool-Aid? Yeah, it was so weird, though. They are tossing everybody's cabin, and it's like, oh, look at what I found, the gun. And it's that one guy that we don't like. Right. So was he the one who planted it? Because I have no yeah. doubt he's on Lindauer's no, side. That was Paul. That was Paul that they took. Not the guy we don't like. Paul. Oh, her, no, her but husband. that's the guy no. who found the gun, the one that we don't like. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The yeah. one who found it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, he's, he's the real smarmy yeah. one. Yeah. I have no doubt yeah. he's on Lindauer's side. Oh, easy. Right. He's part of the first group, I would suspect. But I thought it was interesting, too, that even Jude's like, yeah, this doesn't seem right. 
the body doesn't no. look right, and suddenly, oh, I'm going to keep this gun just right here. Yeah. Right. And they so. had just gotten done searching for the phone. Right. A few days prior to this and didn't find the gun? Exactly. I, no. <laughs> that up, yeah. But nobody's saying that? Something <laughs> is awry. Right. It's going through Jude's head, and we know that. And, yeah. of course, Bryce is like, all right, Jude, we got to get you out of here. Oh, let me guess. Lindauer. Yeah. <laughs> and I love it. Jude just looks at him and kind of rolls his eyes and walks away. Yeah. <laughs> but he does get in and tell Paul that he believes him and gives him his card if he happens to get to a phone. Yeah, but do any of us think that that's going to happen? Well, if he got a call is what he said. Yeah, I don't think it's going to happen. No, they're not going to give him a call. No, they aren't going to let Paul make Hell a phone no. call. Yeah. No. Hell no. no. Yeah, uh, uh, he's going to keep a, a close leash on him now. The fact that he made that video, which I still thought as... Happy as he was to see her and overwhelmed with emotion that he'd still do that. You, you mean to tell me that he couldn't figure out, if not doing a Jonestown, that something was funky? Like, this is what we intend to do and we're still going to do it. Right. Like, he doesn't know what it is? Well, all right. Uh, We're jumping ahead, Terry. Don't get too excited here. Yeah, but I'm excited. I'm <laughs> Steve's excited. Steve's got I, other stuff to talk about first. I was all keyed up in this episode. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't even need any coffee. I'm just wound up. <laughs> <laughs> hyped up on the goofballs. You hold on a second. Steve's got other stuff oh, to talk about. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, we see uh, Reese restrained inside their lab. Yeah. Well, actually, we see her in the future on a mission going through some dark tunnels first. And we go, oh, a flash forward, flash back, flash sideways, something. And then, no, she's actually... Uh, restrained in the lab and apparently she can just shut down except i guess her battery backup has all these uh memories running through her head because we see both past and pre her past and the present in memories and you go yeah. wow this is she's just in weird sleep mode. It's like yeah, in sleep, mode. sleep mode yeah yeah it right. was kind of strange because i wasn't sure what was happening at first Right. Yeah. <laughs> because the way thought, you see, had I, flashes of, like, Jude's house and then... Um, yeah, I thought yeah. she broke away. Yeah, I thought she got away and had a gun. And it wasn't until, like, the episode ended, I was like, oh, the guy she was with was the guy that she was with in life. Right. They had that place together, and they both worked with Apex. But when I first watched it, I was like, oh, she got away from him. Oh, okay, she got a gun and everything. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and she's in Jude's house now. Okay. And she's looking at the picture of the boy, and I'm like, uh, she's thinking she's going to capture the boy again. And it turned out it was a flashback, which is, was like totally mind blowing. It's like, what? Yeah. And then we find out from their tech that unless she is awake, they won't be able to get what they need because in this shutdown mode, as soon as they extract something, it will disintegrate, which I yeah. thought was really interesting. Yeah. Because it's like... That oh. is something else. Yeah, especially with Eve. Just to rip her open. It's like, damn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I really don't like you. No. <laughs> How do you really feel? We can't say that. That's too many bad words. That's true. Yeah. But Lindauer has another idea. So he goes and pays Sophie a visit in the hospital and asks her if she wants to continue her work but at a price. Uh-oh. Now, I understand Sophie wanting to do this because she thinks she could be saved. Right. But once Sophie gets there and they kind of tell her what's what, I'm surprised she's still going through with it. Yes. I was well, too. Well, I was until I saw when she checked her cane. I'm thinking that's all for her. Yeah. Well, yeah, but I mean... She couldn't agree. She couldn't get that unless she agreed to be part of Lindauer's deal. As long as you do this, we'll let you continue your research. So she's got her own agenda, of course, and which makes sense. You know, you want to stay alive, of course. But right, because yeah, she doesn't have long to live. So it's more like Lindauer. Although I'm sure he suspects something about Sophie, even though he didn't see anything in her bag, but. Lindauer's got her believing, at least he thinks that, that she's there, gets to continue as long as she extracts what he wants from Reese. 
Right. And and which, she can, yeah. Yeah. But now he, she's she's got her own little supply there, which I thought was very cool for her own stuff. Right. Which she won't be able to use because Eve and Lindauer plan on taking her out as soon as they get what they want. Right. Yeah, that was pretty crappy. But like anybody really thought that Lindauer was changing the way he was? No. Oh, no. no. Yeah. <laughs> well, not at that point. Uh, he's not changing. If that scene had happened after that other scene I mentioned earlier on in this episode, yeah, maybe. <laughs> oh, jeez. Well, of course, Sophie does get Reese to come out of the shutdown mode. Yeah. And Reese warns Sophie that she's probably going to die if she continues with her testing. Yeah, because interestingly, she says only 7% of the population can be changed basically slowly in the yeah, effect. Yeah, have the marker. It's like, oh, dang. Yeah. Right. Talk about a small percentage. It's an elite club. Yeah. And why And why is it that Reese can't break out of that thing? Did, was that explained in this episode? I mean, she's, no. fought off, she's fought off four or five guys at a time. She's ran and dodged bullets. She's jumped heights that... We can't jump, and she's jumped out of a building in the in the first or second episode of the series. So you mean, and she can't break out of that, really? I know I was saying last week that I put her in a cage, and she's so strong she'll pull the bars apart and escape. So she's not in a regular standard jail cell cage type thing. But I'm just thinking she loses her abilities when she's lying prone. I think it was just more the way they had her down, and that possibly, like they had it at the. At the joints, and then, like, on her arm, it was at the... I'm sorry, it was not at the joint. It was at the forearm, and then um, her upper arm. I still so think she, she could wouldn't break. have been able to, like, move the joints just right to break through. I don't know. But I thought there was, like, needles or something in it, too. But Well, she wasn't wearing shoes. Maybe she can't do it if she's not wearing shoes. You know what? <laughs> Women need the right shoes to do things, all right? Don't, don't exactly. make fun, Terry. Don't make fun. I'm at the age I'm not making fun. I know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It just seemed odd to me. The whole—I mean, it was a really tense scene between Sophie and Reese. But it, to me, I was just in the back of my mind, like, and why is she not getting out? Why didn't she yeah. just immediately shut back down? Yeah, right. Before the next thing in. we see is this device over her eyes that is strobe lighting to the extreme. Yes. Crap! Talk about a seizure inducer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh Lord. Yeah. But that will keep her from shutting down. I would have a migraine for real. Yeah. No oh shit. my God. Yes. Me too. Yeah. Oof. And of course, Lindauer searches Sophie's purse for anything she might be trying to get out of the lab, but doesn't find the one that she has stashed in her cane. <laughs> That's pretty impressive because when you've seen her unscrew the cane, mm-hmm. it wasn't like a quick like. Like candy cane, kind of like one screw, pop it off. She really right. had to do it. I'm like, how the hell did they not see that? Yeah, <laughs> she's good. That was a total. Well, that was a total Edda from Fringe move right there. Yeah, absolutely. I, I was like, yeah, that's Henrietta right there going to town. I like that. Now, of course, we still got Paul and Eve, and they are reunited. Reunited, <laughs> and it feels so good. I was thinking it, but I wasn't gonna say it. <laughs> and we find out here's a bombshell yes this is crucial i think yes two months yes from the first arrivals exit to the second arrivals exit that makes no sense then in my it's mind fun. how he could not remember his wife's face yeah exactly <laughs> but he could i'm like somebody needs to explain this one to me when it's because he had it drawn so uh. Well, that to me goes back to earlier in the season when we saw Lindauer's boss and they had that meeting and Lindauer convinces him to be in charge of the camp. If it's only been two months, I mean, Lindauer would have had to military wise strong armed his way into that position. Oh, no, no. I don't mean like the fact that it's actually 10 years for the first arrival being here, but I'm saying... If the first group left and it was only two months later where the second group left from the future, how was he a little, like, not sure what his wife looked like? That's what oh, I'm that, saying. Well, I'm saying even the other end of that, the two months, if it's really just two months, I don't trust anything she says. 
or well, he said it, but you know, it's like right. if it really if it really was two months, how did Lindauer get in that position? Well, except that was the thing. The first group apparently set their time to arrive in the past back further. That's true. Yeah, something. And well, that's where the 10 years occurred. Yeah, and the sec- somebody in this episode said that it might have been Paul or Eve or somebody else about something went wrong in our settings right. or it was a rush job. Yes, it was a rush job, and I, yes, something yeah, did go something wrong like for yeah. the second group. Yeah, so, but I see what you're saying, Sean. How how would he, like, not recognize? Yeah, that's kind of weird. Well, except she had aged 10 years yeah. and the last time he saw her, which was only a couple of months ago. So, I mean, yeah, it's a little, whoa. <laughs> a little dis- yeah, a little disconcerting. It's like, honey, you've been out in the sun too much. What the yeah. heck? <laughs> What's the matter with you? Sunblock. Yeah. There you go. And then we have this interesting little conversation out on the pier where Eve tells him about her trip to Africa. Mm-hmm. And actually seeing the l- animals alive. Is that what yeah. it was about? Because I, I wasn't sure when she's like, there was actually elephants. And I'm like, were you just yeah. excited about elephants? Apparently yeah. elephants are gone in the future. Okay. Gone in the future. Yes. And then she it goes on and explains how we're killing them and using their tusks and everything, you know. And so it's. Yeah. And of course, Paul notices everybody's on their phones, and they kind of have this. And a boy, yeah, Paul. The long piece is really kind of weird. That's true. Yeah. And a boy, Paul. Right on. Yeah, they got so much to look at around them, and they keep looking at their phones. Yep. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's because you're the weirdo if you're just like randomly staring at people now. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god why are you looking at me i know people used to people watch all the time now it's like if you do it it's like uh, you're you're stalking me you're st- I'm right like, i'm just sta- i'm just standing here watching people yeah you still gotta just people watch depending where you are because <laughs> yeah but if you gotta act like you're not watching when you are people watching then it makes you look suspicious that's right I used to like go to the There's malls. There's no way to win. <laughs> like, well, yeah, I know. I used to go to the malls. Like, I got tired at the arcade. I got tired of window shopping, or I actually bought something. And it was like, I'd go like to where there was like this opening where the stairwell to the next level was, and and I would just kind of stand and look over the edge of the railing and just watch people walking around in and out of stores, one store to the other, and nobody, nobody, when they saw you looking at them, gave it a second thought. Yeah, now it's yep. a little weird. What yep. the hell, man? But he, I love when Paul's like, everybody looks at their phones, and I'm like, yeah! <laughs> you ought to see them at the mall when they walk right near the fountain and they fall in, Paul. It's great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> poor Paul. I don't, I mean, uh, okay, I'm frustrated, so I can't use words. I understand he's excited to see his wife and all this time together, but then when she gives him, like, I'm going to say it's a manifest for yep. him to read, and he's like, but why? You didn't seem this naive 10 minutes ago. Exactly. (laughs) Exactly. What the hell? You've got to understand what you're saying is not just like, hey, no big deal, guys. We were just being stupid kids. It's not the same thing. No. How how could you not at least be concerned about, we tried to die and fail, but we're going to try it again soon. Right. And your long lost wife is asking you to do this. Now, he might not suspect that she's in cahoots with Lindauer. I would well, suspect, the thing I would... is, is she actually, and we don't get to see this conversation, and I think that's why it, it made it so difficult to buy him really selling this hard, was she really told him what was going on. No, I and don't basically, think she did. Well, yeah, she did, but we didn't get to see it. Wait, you think said, she Let told me tell him? you what's up. Okay. Yeah. She's- she spilled the beans? You think yes, so? Yes, to him, yes. Absolutely she did. What? Like I don't I don't feel I didn't get that. Well that well, okay, then I, I could go with that what we know about Eve, because then she could have him part of those who were killed, where he probably suspects that she spilled the beans so he's safe. He figures he's good. My wife's told me about this. I'll record this thing even though I was like, Man, well, I don't want to do it. Why should I have to do that? And, you know, that would be safe. But then that makes him 
have to suspend his disbelief that nothing is going to happen to the people at the camp. Right. I mean, this does, you got to like a lot of loose plugs, but you got no sockets to plug them in. That's why I'm not sure she to- spilled the beans, but if she did, you still got all these loose ends that none of them tie up together. Well, unless she's basically including him in the first group and in their mission, because she tells him for the cause, stopping Apex, but it didn't work. And we realized that the moment you and the others showed up. So you think she's really going to save him? Oh, I think that's her plan. No, I don't buy that. Well, uh, that she, that's the sales job she has for him. Okay, but that's why I'm saying that. It would then have to be where he buys into the story that he's been brought in so he's safe. Right, yes. But Absolutely, then now, that's what she's selling him, but I don't then, think she has any plans of going through with it as far as keeping him alive. I think he's going to die with the rest yeah, of them. Yeah, but then he's going to have to do a quick turn. Like you said, we didn't see the conversation. It had to be a hell of a one. He's going to have to sit back and say, okay, screw those people then. Right. That's a quick sellout for Paul. He got his wife back. That was the only thing he cared about. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. I just feel he like had he's a... no feelings for those people. Yeah. None whatsoever. I don't know. I don't know if I can push it that far. <laughs> uh. Paul could, but yeah, okay. I can, I can, I can kind of roll with it for a while. I, like I said, there's just still too many loose ends. I think, like you just said, Steve, Paul's days are numbered. She plans to take him out. Yeah, anybody like her is like, oh, you're my husband, but you, you're in the second group, not the first group. The hell with you. So I'll, I'll, I'll play you for a while. I'll make my appearance. I won't stay hidden. I'll give you this spiel. I'll con you into doing this video. And, and what we're saying must have happened. I'll make you think that you're with us now. Everything's fine. Everything's nice and safe. I'm assuming he still doesn't know she's in cahoots with Lindauer. I'm sure that she... It was just she and him in the room where he filmed that. Right. And she's showing on the laptop the, the actual video to Lindauer in a whole different room. Right. And, and then he thinks everything's copacetic, but it's not going to be. Right. I don't see yeah, him being... Yeah, Paul's in for a, a big surprise. There's. Uh, no yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, see, I, I, I can kind of see that, because she's just an evil... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing is going to get in the way of her... What she thinks her mission is. I hope not, because I'm not watching this for nothing. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, this should be interesting. Well, I'm not. I'm not watching only eleven episodes for nothing. <laughs> well, obviously, Steve's got a tinfoil hat on right now because I'm not buy it, buying it. But what do you guys think? So you should send us your tinfoil hat theories, or I just want somebody to tell me. And Terry, that we are completely wrong, and Steve's right. Do you agree with that? <laughs> that ain't going to happen. <laughs> Come on, Fred. Let's hear it, Fred. <laughs> Let us have it, Fred. Come on, buddy. <laughs> well, we want to know what your theories are on this, and if you think that's just a bridge too far at this point. Hey, Steve, did we get any feedback this week? Oh, we certainly did. Our good friend Fred from the Netherlands not only sent us one audio feedback, but after listening to our episode seven podcast, he had to send another one. So we've got two. So let's take a listen. Hello, Fangirl Zone podcasters. This is Fred from the Netherlands with some feedback for the 47 Survivors podcast. It's about The Crossing Season 1, Episode 8. First off, what is with Gabe? Uh, Marshall's friend scratching the blackboard and causing a riot. Which bug is itching him? Later he says to, Ma- to Marshall on the phone, get off your ass and join the revolution. I think in his case, it's just a revolution because of revolution's sake. Next topic. Who is that lady in the back of the pub when Gabe is talking to the people of the town? On IMDb, she has no name yet. She later got arrested because she had no papers. Is she good? Is she bad? Is she one of the people from the first arrival group? Is she with or against Lindauer and Dr. Gerda Pryor? I checked episode 5 in which the first rival group comes together. She is not one of them. Next thing. Dr. Greta Pryor is getting more and more ruthless. So when Reese is on that table, she for instance says, We need her genetic code, so slice her open and get it. 
And what she does is tricks her own husband in making that video. Paul seemed to me a much more intelligent person than that. But yeah, well, perhaps he loves and trusts his wife, undoubtedly. In the end, Greta says, when the survivors in the camp take their own lives in what appears to be a ritual suicide, this will explain why. So, the video Paul made. Oh man, I'm so happy this is not the season finale. That would have been a terrible cliffhanger. On the other hand, I should not praise the day before it's over, because we still don't know what is going to come. And Lindauer is not be much better than Greta, if we see how he tricks Sophie into helping him. We finally know Agent Rama Ren is really dead. It's a pity though, because I liked her and the role she played. But perhaps Agent Foster will take that role. Finally, I think Roy is really a nice guy and not as jealous as we probably expected him to be. I like that he gives Hannah the locket back and even without taking Marshall's photo out of it. And he even brings it to Marshall at the end of the episode. Okay, greetings, this was all. Till next time, Fred from the Netherlands. Hello Fangirl Zone Podcast, this is Fred with two extra pieces of feedback for the Season 1 Episode 8 podcast. First off, in the official ABC podcast about crossing, the showrunners Dan Dworkin and Jay Beatty said the following. You know, I can't promise that at the end of our finale you won't have more questions, I'm sure you will. However, I can, I can also tell you, you, you will feel satisfied by the experience because it does... All these different story threads do come to a head and all these characters do kind of their stories crescendo in okay. what we think. I mean, in that finale, we're just super proud of the finale. We just think the finale is cool and just want as many people as possible to see it. Second season or no second season. Like, I think people will be, will be satisfied by, by this full season of TV. So people keep watching. Keep That's watching. Okay, so that is a relief. So according to the showrunners, we don't have to be afraid for a terrible cliffhanger. I think that is a big relief and makes the rest of the season perhaps a little more enjoyable. Second point, since my first recording I have listened to your episode 7 podcast. In that podcast you were talking about the kiss of Hannah and Marshall when they had, so to say, escaped from the village outing with Marshall's rubber boat. You were disgusted by the possibility that Hannah was kissing her grandfather or so there. Listen to yourselves. Roy, of course, was pissed, and uh, oh, they have their little moment with Marshall and Hannah, and oh, they kiss, and everybody online was like, please don't be <laughs> oh, great no. something grandfather. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I... And Keep it in the family. Uh, <laughs> I had to laugh about that, but at I the know. same time, I'm like cringing, going, have we figured out if they're related yet? No, <laughs> not yet. <laughs> really hoping the answer was no they're not but i was yeah I, i'm kind of thinking the answer is going to be yes yeah i am too yeah that's what i'm thinking yeah. <laughs> yeah, you just kissed your granddaughter oh yeah great times whatever yeah great 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 great, great. yeah uh. still ew uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> okay as i have explained in my episode four feedback if marshall is one of hannah's ancestors he will be her great-great-great-grandfather, so about six generations back. In that case, they would share about 3% of their genome. Whereas, for instance, two full cousins share on average 12.5% of their genome. And we all know there are a lot of cousin or second cousin marriages all over the world, including in the USA. And we all accept that. So... I think you shouldn't be that yui yui about this. Greetings, all the best from Fred in the Netherlands. Bye. All right, Fred. I can't agree more with you with Gabe. He's, He's so just weird. Yeah, he just wants to cause trouble. And maybe this is why Marshall has got that reputation of always being a trouble is because he's got a best friend that's always pushed him in that direction yeah i would i could see that i can see that because if you've been best friends since who knows when right you know, chances are good you're joined at the hip for everything you're doing and maybe he's just a lot better 
better at not getting caught. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't, you know, but the thing that struck me was, aside from I think Gabe takes too much coffee, is that didn't wasn't Gabe, if I'm remembering an episode, a couple episodes back with the um, thing with the drop in the phone in the camp, yeah, wasn't the drone. wasn't yep. he a little more hesitant than Marshall? I mean, not lots, but wasn't he more curious and like, you know, are you sure you want to do this? And Marshall's like, yeah. And, you know, like they were they were tag teaming together. Gabe didn't seem like he was dragged into the middle of it. I don't mean it that extreme, but didn't he seem like he was kind of like sitting back a little bit and trying to figure out why Marshall was going through all this? Well, right. at first, and now all of a sudden he's got these pictures, and now all of a sudden it's like, give me a whole pot of coffee, you know, and, <laughs> and, and a soapbox stand on, and a bag of M and M's in a soapbox, and I'm ready to <laughs> rock and roll and start a riot. I was like, what? Well, at first, I think Gabe was, if you remember, he was like all for like, we need to do something, we should storm up there, and then when Marshall's like, oh, here I have a real idea, then Gabe's like, oh, I don't know about this, because did you see those right. signs? So I think he's. He's like all for it right up, right at once and like, yeah, let's go jump in head first. Yeah. And then it's like, oh, wait, you're doing this with me? Hold on, back up. Yeah, dive into the pool with no water just because there's a board there. Right. <laughs> and then you'll worry about the rest later. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, an unknown lady. Lady. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she didn't quite look like a bag lady, but. No papers, apparently, when she got arrested. No identification, so. No. She still that's not a good place. sign. Usually that means you've uh, come from the future. Right. And I, <laughs> I don't know what side she stands on here yet. No, no, but she seems curious to know what's going on in the camp, so she probably has something to do with it. My warning flags are up here. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Big time. Big time. I mean, she just seemed out of place. And then I kept thinking to myself, you know, maybe she broke out of the camp because Gabe was talking to all the the common, the the normal townspeople, getting them all fired up. And I was like, well, maybe she snuck out of the camp. So like maybe she shouldn't be trusted because she's sneaky as far as getting out of the camp. But no, there's more there. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> and in regards to Doctor Pryor. Yes. Uh. uh okay. I do not like this woman, and the fact that no. she does trick her own husband. Yep. I I think Steve and I were talking about this the other day, just kind of off topic from another podcast. I wasn't sure where she was going, and I'm like, maybe she's not really doing this to him. Maybe she's trying to have this power move for Lindauer to see, but no. I don't know. I just, I feel like this woman is seriously, like, super slimy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Even yeah. more than Lindauer. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. we saw in last week's episode, in 7, you know, that little, slight little crack in him. Just the tiniest crack. And we see a little bit more of it this week. But it's like, yeah, even he's starting to be getting the first things of, wow, she's really, like, scummy. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and then, with your final thought about Roy, I have a question for you, mm-hmm. too. And then, Fred, you can... Kick us something later, because I'm sure this is going to get the wheels turning. Yep. What if... Here, are you ready for this? My tinfoil hat theory. Drum roll. What if the person who gave Hannah the locket with Marshall's picture is actually somebody from Roy's family line? <laughs> <laughs> you just messed with my head, man! <laughs> All because he knows what's going on, and somehow like he's going to you know, push it out to the future, then generation by generation. Hmm. That's a good one. Yeah, it sure is. I shall take off the tinfoil hat take now. Hat. Well, that's a, Well, that could go, yeah. yeah. It could be that. It could be just that he's love Lauren Roy. He's like, oh, I gotta give her the locket and it's got Marshall's picture in it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, kind of a thing like, oh, I wish it was my picture in there. I don't know. Yeah, he, uh, it could be that and it could be just simply he's hung up on her and he's, he's so torn about the fact that she's one of these refugees, not just some gal in town that he's fallen for. So I thought yeah. I'd throw that out there. I yeah. like it. That's a nice, like uh, nice theory. Sure yeah, is. Yeah, I like that. We'll keep All it right. <laughs> Moving on to part two of his feedback. <laughs> uh, it was really good to hear that the, um, Showrunners are not going to leave us on a um, massive cliffhanger. Yay. <laughs> well, we'll find out tonight. 
<laughs> as as far as when we're recording this, yeah. We'll be yeah, the judge we'll, of that. Yeah, we will. <laughs> and then your second point. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, because I was leaving it and I was I was reading it, and I'm sorry, and I was laughing. I'm still gonna say ew. Because in no way, shape, or form am I cool with any kind of family member getting together with a family member. Um, I don't care if it's like fourth cousin, 12 times removed. I don't care. If you're family, you're family. Do not. I was going Go to there. say something probably inappropriate. You. So, yeah, just no. So, I don't know. I, I do understand that it is. A thing all over the world, but yeah, no. Acceptable in some parts of the U.S., but not every part. <laughs> but I still think most people say no. Just say right. no to, just say no. Yeah, I mean, you know, it the the whole thing about I forget how close the first cousins or whatever it was I saw yeah, on a show that two full that, cousins that, that twelve point five percent. Yeah, but I mean, I heard on some other show somebody was talking about this oh a while back that I was watching and something about the the rate of children who are born to people who have that you know somewhat but not twelfth removed uh, somewhat <laughs> dis- like the rate of kids having problems physical problems or mental problems or whatever is not nearly as high as what everybody says that it it's more of a myth than the actual reality but yeah it's still the idea of you know like i could see at a family reunion you know like some dude seeing like you know this cousin who lives like on the other side of the country and he's like wow she's kind of nice you know and but he doesn't do anything about it it's just like wow she's really kind of you know thinking to himself and that, but you don't act on it you want yeah. your family tree to branch is what i'm saying <laughs> You don't want a two by four. That yeah. Oh! Okay. Now you just lost our Home Depot listenership. <laughs> Damn. Um, All right. Well, Frank, we, <laughs> Fred, we really do appreciate. Oh, uh, uh, let's Thank let's you, put that down. And I unfortunately wasn't able to tweet and confuse the heck out of everybody this week, but Steve was tweeting. <laughs> Oh, absolutely, and thanks to everyone that live-tweeted this episode. It was a whole lot of fun tweeting. There's no doubt about that. Phil, Michelle, Gail, all of you, great tweeting with you, and always a blast, and there was a lot of WTFs going on last <laughs> night. That's for damn sure. Uh, I bet so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and... Uh, and uh, so, listen, uh, we want you to please review and rate us on iTunes. And uh, with good ratings and reviews, it helps other fans of the show find us. So tell your friends, and we hope that you are enjoying the podcast. And, like I said, we want to get your emails. Send us something to contact us at fangirlzone.com. And, of course, check out Facebook page, which is at FGZone. Our Instagram is at the Fangirl Zone Podcast. And, of course, tweet along with Steve and sometimes me at 47Survivors. I will usually do it off the fangirl zone so I don't screw everybody up. <laughs> and we're not, like, double doing the same thing. So, yeah. <laughs> all that being said, don't forget to check out our webpage, too, our website. Woohoo! Fangirlzone.com. Because yeah. we have cool little things on there. We are, we're always trying to post stuff about... TV and comics and books and streaming services and all sorts of stuff. And, of course, we have our shopping links if you want to check those out. I just had to buy a new phone case because I've managed to finally crack mine. Which, by the way, if you're looking for a phone case, you have you can get Steve and I's face on it. We don't have Terry's face on it. Or all the fangirls Consider on it. yourself lucky. But I have dropped this case <laughs> that I got off our Redbubble store multiple, multiple times. The corner finally cracked, but my phone is still fine. So I think it's pretty damn go. impressive. <laughs> yeah. Because I've dropped it on concrete. It's not just like, oh, I dropped it in the house. So just throwing that out there because I'm pretty impressed with the fact that it didn't, like, shatter. <laughs> but <laughs> all that being said, for this episode of 47 Survivors, I am Sean Fangirlass. And I'm Terry, and my metal collar is way too tight. And I'm Steve. Only 7% of your population has a genetic marker that will make Apex possible. If you don't have it and you try this, you will die. And until next time.